These symbols are called notes. Notes just tell you to press down a key for a specific length of time. This is called a whole note. A whole note means to play a note and hold it down for four beats, like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and so on. This is called a half note. A half note tells you to press a key and hold it down for two beats. They sound like this. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. This is called a quarter note. A quarter note means to press down a key and hold it for just one beat, like this. One, 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 one. Music is divided up into what we call bars, and every bar has the same number of beats. The most common number of beats for each bar is four beats per bar. That means we would count to four in every bar and then start again at one, like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So how do we know how many beats are in each bar? Well, at the beginning of the song, they'll write what we call a time signature. A time signature is two numbers. The top one tells you the number of beats in every bar. In this case, four beats per bar. The bottom number tells you what kind of note gets counted as one beat. And usually this is going to be a four, meaning a quarter note is one beat, as we've been practicing. So let's look at a few examples of music in 4-4 four, four time. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two. Three, four. There won't always be four beats in every measure, though. Some songs, such as waltzes, have three beats in every measure, and therefore these are said to be in three, four time, like this. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Or one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Besides notes. We also have silences in music, and those silences are called rests. There's a rest that corresponds with each of the types of notes we've learned. This is called a whole rest. A whole rest hangs underneath the line, it's a little block, and it means rest for four beats, or the entire measure. So in your head, when you see a whole rest, you should count however many beats are in the measure in your head. and rest for the entire measure. This is called a half rest. A half rest was also like a little block, but this time it's on top of a line. And this one gets two beats of silence. One, two. This is called a quarter rest. And a quarter rest, just like a quarter note, is one beat, but it now is just silence. So let's look at this example with quarter rests. We're going to play where the quarter notes are and rest where the quarter rests are. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This example starts with a half rest and then it's followed by a quarter rest. So how many beats do you think you're resting in total at the beginning of this measure? If you said three, that's correct because the half rest is two beats and a quarter rest is one beat. So you would go one, two, three, go. You would just play on the final beat, beat four. One more time, one, two, three, four. Okay, now that we've got 
the concept of rhythms down. Let's look at how we put these to music. So on the piano, there's two halves. There's the half that's above middle C. This is called the treble clef. Everything above middle C or to the right of middle C is going to be played in the treble clef. Everything to the left of middle C is going to be played in what we call the bass clef. The bass clef looks like this. So usually your right hand plays the treble clef and your left hand plays the bass clef. Now, each clef consists of five lines and also spaces that are in between the lines. And you can draw a note on any one of these lines or spaces. So let's do an example. Here's a note on the first line. The next step above that would be on the first space. And then the next step above that would be on the next line. And then the next space and so on and so forth, walking up one white note at a time and the pattern is line space, line space, line space. And as you can see, the notes that are higher pitched or more to the right on the piano are going to be written higher on the staff. So they're going to be higher, uh, visually higher as well. So treble clef is all the notes above middle C. Now the first note we want to remember is middle C. To draw middle C, we need to add a new line in between the treble and the bass clef because this note is right in between. So we're going to draw this line and the note that's on this line is middle C. The next step up is going to be D, which is on a space right above C. It's kind of hanging off the bottom line of the treble clef. The next step above that is an E, which is on the first line of the treble clef. Then F is on the first space of the treble clef. Next is G, which is on the second line of the treble clef, and then A on the second space, B on the third line of the treble clef, and then we have treble C, which is on the third space of the treble clef. So that's how you read the notes. It's just one white note at a time is stepping up and it's going line space, line space. In the bass clef, if you go down from middle C, the first note down is going to be B. This is sitting on the shelf on the, above the top line of the bass clef on a space. The next one is going to be A, which is on the top line of the bass clef, and then G, which is on the top space of the bass clef, F on the next line down, E on the next space, and again, following the pattern, line space, line space, and then base C is going to be a space note down here. So now we can see all the notes from base C up to treble C. Now you may be wondering, how am I going to remember which lines and which spaces go to which letters? Well, today I just want you to remember three or sorry, I just want you to remember five key notes. So the first one is middle C, obviously, because it's right in between. You make a new line, and that note is middle C. The next one I want you to remember is going to be five steps above middle C. So let's count five steps. One, two, three, four, five. This line note is G, five steps above middle C. And this one is pretty easy to remember because another name for the treble clef is actually the G clef. You see this circle in the treble clef? Well, this is directing you towards the second line note, which is the letter G. So if you can remember that the treble clef is, it even kind of looks like a G, right? It is also called the G clef, then you can remember that G is on the second line. Now, let's find the note on the opposite side of middle C, five steps down from middle C. One, two, three, four, five. This note is going to be an F. An F is on the second line. If you're looking down uh, from middle C into the bass clef, then this is going to be the second line down. And actually, another name for the bass clef is the F clef, because look at those two dots that are um, on the bass clef. They are pointing towards the second line down, which is F. So visually, G and F are both on the opposite sides of middle C, which makes sense because they're the, the same distance away, and middle C is directly in the middle of the treble and the bass clef. So remember, 
G is the second line up and F is the second line down. The next note we're going to remember is four steps above middle, above G, and let's count that. One, two, three, four. And now we've arrived at treble clef C, which is the third space into the treble clef. If we go four steps down from the opposite side, which was F, one, two, three, four, and now we've arrived at bass clef C, which is still equidistant or the same distance from middle C, and therefore it's going to be visually three steps, three spaces down. So treble clef C is three spaces up in the treble clef, and bass clef C is three spaces down into the bass clef. So that's five notes you should remember. We got middle C, and then five steps away is F in the bass clef and G in the treble clef, and then four more steps from that on the spaces is C in the bass clef and treble C in the treble clef. If you can remember those notes, it'll be pretty straightforward to get to the ones around them. For example, we know that this is a G, so what do you think the next space above that is going to be? Well, it's going to be the next letter, which is A. Um, we know that this is middle C, so what's going to be the next step above that on a space is D. We know that F is on the second line down, so we can find this next note, which is one step below that, it's an E. So we're kind of interpolating between those five letters we've learned to read all the notes in between. Now this is a good way to get started because it allows you to locate which side of the treble clef and the bass clef the notes are on, and it forces you to just practice getting used to locating the notes, which is something you really, really want to get good at before you start getting too much into reading music, because if you can quickly just look at one of the notes and say, oh, that's a D, or that's an F, or that's a B, or whatever, you will have a huge advantage when it comes to reading notes. So take some time. I've attached a worksheet with a bunch of notes you can practice reading. Just go through them, do a bunch of random notes, and practice locating them in the bass clef and the treble clef. And then when you read music, you'll have you'll be able to access it and get right to that note right away, which is exactly what we want with as little thinking as possible. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions, let me know.